Bears will look at the new Alex Box Stadium being constructed as we speak. It'll be the Tigers' new home starting next year. The Tigers are hoping this is not their last at bat in this old ballpark. They need three to tie. Down 7-4 as we go to the top of the ninth in game two of this Super Regional. UC Irvine won last night. A win here today gets them back to Omaha for the second straight year. Leon Landry leads off and takes the ball high. Landry, Schimpf in the top of the order for the Tigers. Landry 0 for 3 with a strikeout. But a great catch out in center field earlier today. And he's ahead in the count, two balls and no strikes. This ballpark opened up in 1938. A lot of great memories here. It's been the home for five College World Series championship teams. And the crowds have always been very supportive of the Tigers over the years here. And they are behind their Tigers now, hoping for a rally here in the top of the ninth. Tigers want to be back here tomorrow, Kyle. It's just been a tough Super Regional all around for LSU. It has, but they're not done yet. Three outs to play with here in the ninth inning with crowd on their feet. And a leadoff walk for Leon Landry. Here's a look at our Coke Zero game trap. For the Anteaters, six runs on six hits in one inning. That was the fourth inning. Matt Clark has really had a great series for LSU. Four for seven, a couple of RBIs. Irvine, eight for 12 with runners in scoring position. And the pitching staff for Irvine, to me, has been the biggest game changer. Scott Gorman was great yesterday. Went six and two thirds, held this LSU offense down, and Daniel Babona was more the same today. For the first time in this Super Regional, Mike Gillespie comes out of the dugout to go to the pitching mound. Usually Ted Silva, the Anteaters pitching coach, makes the trip, but Gillespie comes out this time around. See how fired up he was? Goes out there, he's fired up, and he's trying to get his guys fired up. All you're trying to do right here is neutralize the crowd. That's it. That's the only reason you go out right here. The crowd's starting to get into it. They're on their feet. Mike Gillespie knows the way that this game is played. He's done it for a long time, and it's just trying to neutralize the crowd in this spot. Take him out of it as much as he can. The problem is they're probably going to jump on him pretty good. I think he can get his two cents in with the home plate umpire right there. He's always standing up for his guys. He's always been that way. Mike Gillespie. Spent 20 seasons as USC's head coach, National Coach of the Year in 98 when the Trojans won a national title. His goal was to be a head coach again in California after a one-year absence where he spent a season coaching in the Yankees system. He's back as a head coach and trying to get Irvine back to the College World Series. If you're LSU right now, the goal is to get to Dean. If you get to Blake Dean, you got a chance to tie this thing and potentially go ahead. Strike into Schimpf. Looked like Schimpf might have been taking a strike out of the nine hole right there. Didn't look very aggressive in that first pitch. And that might not be a bad approach. Pettis, who's been a little bit wild since coming in. You want the leadoff hitter, go ahead and take one. Breaking pitch comes back in for strike two. Eric Pettis, the closer on for UC Irvine, trying to nail this one down. Schimpf, the number nine hitter, trying to get aboard. Swung on and hit into right field. Landry around second. He'll head for third. He is going to be held up there. A double for Schimpf, runners at second and third, and nobody out for LSU in the ninth. Here they come. You knew it was going to happen at some point. You waited a while on the ninth inning with nobody out, but this is just too good of a pitch 0-2. Ryan Schimpf, talk about how good of a nine-hole hitter this is, but you give him a chance when you elevate a breaking ball 0-2. Obviously not trying to go there. They're trying to wrap it around his feet, but it stays up. Jim puts a great swing on it. Now, LSU back to the top of the order with Hollander. Sold out Alex Box Stadium on its final weekend. And now the top of the order in Hollander, who has been quiet in the Super Regional. Swings at the first pitch and misses. Strike one. Hollander, five home runs on the year. He represents the tying run. And you see, with runners in scoring position in this series, advantage Irvine.
We talked about the struggles of the top half of this LSU lineup, specifically one through three. This is where Hollander needs to come through. Off the end of his bat to deep short. Orloff, not in time, bases loaded. And now the go-ahead run comes to the plate in Jared Mitchell. And now, because of the visit earlier on in this inning by Mike Gillespie, you can't go back to the mound. And I don't disagree. I think he went out at the right time. But now base is loaded. Nobody out at a time where you'd like to go out and stem the momentum at this point. You can't. Because if he goes out, he's got to take Pettis out of the ballgame. Mitchell, three hits today, including a solo home run last inning. Called for time. It wasn't granted by home plate umpire Bill Speck. Strike one. And now Paul Maneri's out of the dugout again. Now you don't have to give him time out, but I think this is plenty early enough. Bill Speck doesn't give it. And I'm telling you what, this is Paul Maneri's going to go crazy right here. As you talk about changing potential of the course of the end. The bottom line is the home plate umpire doesn't have to give it. If you think it's too late, and this one's close enough, it's a judgment call. But that will get him fired up here. The umpires have been very busy in this Super Regional. Very visible, you might say, in the last two games. You know what? If it's the second inning, there's nobody on base. Nobody really cares about this one. In the ninth inning with the bases loaded and nobody out, then obviously it's going to cause a whole lot of stir. Now, if you're Mitchell at this point, you can't give up on it. If you ask for it and you don't get it, you still got to be ready to hit. I don't think he'd have been swinging at that first pitch break of all anyway. Bases loaded. Nobody out for the Tigers. The 0-1 pitch from Pettis swung on and missed, 0-2. Nick Pontiff is on deck for LSU. It looks like he is going to pinch hit in the number three spot in this order. Granted time, and the crowd reacts. There's Pontiff. Outside. One and two. Mitchell hit his sixth home run of the year. Lag Stinnick. After swing. No appeal down to David Wiley at third. He says no, he didn't. Good two take. and two. Tough pitch to take, too. A little break of ball that they're trying to wrap around his foot. They threw it in the exact spot that they wanted to, but Mitchell did a good job of laying off. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out. Way outside, and a great play by Aaron Lowenstein. To make the catch on that pitch. We saw this when Pettis came in to warm up. It was last inning, but all of the fastballs were missing up and away to the left-handed hitter. His front shoulder was flying. He was too excited. And now it's starting to come back in. He held his emotions in check when he came out in the eighth. Threw a couple breaker balls to get out of the inning, but now it's creeping back in. And the crowd's back in it. The emotions are getting high. This is where you got to take a deep breath and try to slow everything down because the game's just moving too fast for Pettis right now. 3-2 count and know where to put Mitchell. Missed it. Walks a run in. And it's 7-5. to five. 